The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. For Real Agriculture, I'm Kelvin Hepner, and for this episode of the Canola School, we're at Manitoba Ag Days in Brandon. Pleased to be joined by Courtney Ross, agronomy specialist with the Canola Council of Canada. And Courtney, you were on stage here at Ag Days talking about uh, the latest when it comes to verticillium in uh, in canola here in Western Canada. Where are we at coming out of the 2023 growing season, heading into 24? What's new with verticillium in terms of our understanding of this disease that still seems like a newcomer, but it's been around for a, a bit now in, in at least parts of the prairies? Yeah, so after the 2023 growing season, um, we really found that verticillium has spread a little bit farther than um, we originally thought in 2022. So uh, 2022, mainly a Manitoba problem and now moving into Saskatchewan. Um, so those are kind of the main things. We're um, increasing some research capacity for verticillium as well so that's always good news Versailles is still very much in its infancy so when it comes to um, you know new best management practices new things um, new things to combat the disease it's still very much uh, in the beginning stages but we're definitely moving towards um, uh, more research and, and being able to fill in some of our gaps in knowledge okay and just general awareness is increasing which that might be linked with why we're also finding it in new geographies as well? Absolutely. The last two years we've really pushed, um, you know, when to scout, what we're looking for. The provincial disease surveys have also really ramped up their verticillium uh, surveying effort. So with all of that combined, more producers and more agronomists are aware of verticillium and therefore we're finding it. We know that it's been here since 2015. We know that it's been widespread, you know, across um, Manitoba, Saskatchewan and Alberta, but if you don't know what you're looking for, you don't know what you're looking for, right? And I think that um, our extension efforts and uh, along with all the agronomists across the prairies have really worked together to, to make sure that the knowledge is there. And that's absolutely why we're finding it everywhere. Are we getting a better understanding of the impact on, on yield? And I guess along with other factors, how it interacts with black leg might be another uh, contributing part of that discussion as well? Yeah, for sure. So we know that um, black leg and verticillium are working together. How they're working together, we're just not 100% sure yet. So that's something that's in the works with research. Uh, yield implications are also in the works. We're hoping that in 2024, 2025, we're going to have some data to be able to give to producers and to agronomists that, um, that, that need that in areas that are really heavily affected by okay. verticillium. Okay. What's your advice to growers, though, heading into the 2024 year here in terms of the, the keys, timing for scouting, how to look for it, how to, I guess, yeah, follow through on that increased awareness that is there now? Yeah, so I think first things first, everybody needs to, you know, be really aware of what has been happening in their fields in the past. Uh, if you know that you've had a verticillium problem, know that you've had a black leg problem, really important to get out scouting early for black leg. Um, and verticillium timing for scouting is really, we want to see that later in harvest, a little bit later. With black leg, we see, we want to go in at 60% seed color change. With verticillium, we need to push it just a little bit, you know, um, right around straight cut timing, after swathing. You know, you can even go in after you've cut your canola crop, um, straight cut it, and then you can go out and look for it too. Um, it just presents itself better that way and we um it's more um it just yeah it presents itself better later in the season so that's the timing that we want to see when we're looking we want to go in and take um snips of cross sections of the plant right at the root tissue looking for more of a starburst pattern in the um in the root cortex whereas opposed to black leg it'll just be very a very distinct black wedge uh we're also going to be looking for the shredding of the of uh, the stem tissue looking for microsclerotia which is it'll look like you're taking a pepper shaker to your canola plant. Really, really small, so much smaller than that, than, the scler than sclerotia with sclerotinia or the pycnidia with black leg. So those are kind of our key indicators when we're looking for verticillium. What are some of the risk factors that we are coming to understand in terms of what leads to a, a, a verticillium problem? Yeah, so with verticillium, very much uh, an environment issue, right? So in Manitoba, it's been kind of an issue because we have really moist springs, which allows the spores to germinate in the soil, and then hot and dry Julys, which is when the disease gets uptaken with the plant, by the plant. So kind of the perfect conditions. And then the last couple of years in Saskatchewan, we've had a couple of um, you know timely rainfalls that have, have that have contributed to to that. And as well, um, the microspores are really small, so they travel very quickly, right? It's a soil-borne disease, but they they also move by water and air so it's very easy for them to just be picked up in one field and move to the next yeah. and it sounds like it also enjoys 
a crop that's already stressed by something else, right? Yeah, absolutely. Verticillium very much takes advantage of already stressed crops. So, you know, in 2022, we saw a lot of flea beetle pressure. We saw a lot of um, excess moisture pressure. So when the canola didn't have a leg to stand on, verticillium just came in and took over. Um, so that's something that we really want to uh, be aware of as well. Finally, Courtney, you mentioned research. Uh, research funding tends to go in cycles, and a lot of new cycles are beginning right now on the research side of things. I guess we should stay tuned when it comes to uh, new developments and better understanding this, this disease as there is uh, increased focus and priority on, on understanding verticillium on the prairies. Yeah, absolutely. I think that um, you know, with it becoming an increasing problem, more producers are voicing their concerns, and therefore it's being heard in, at industry level and then being you know, heard at research level. So um, we definitely have shifted a little bit of focus or more focus than we've used to on verticillium. So um, nothing that I can speak to just yet, but some, some really cool stuff coming in the, in the next you know, three to five years. Okay, so stay tuned for, yes. for more info on verticillium. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Thanks for your time and enjoy the rest of Ag Days, Courtney. Perfect, thank you so much.